Hi, welcome to a new episode, in the Internet Surfer, hosting the most horror, and creepiest stories, from Reddit. Please, don't forget, to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy. The Watchers, a long horror story of door-to-door -door sales girls from Reddit No Sleep. Wow. This was excellent. Creative, well-written, and overall, one of my favorite stories I have found on Reddit. Bravo. I am guessing Aliens is the conclusion here but would love to hear from the writer. What were your inspirations? Thank you for sharing. Hear the story. Working a door-to-door -door sales job is not glamorous. Between the countless homeowners who absolutely loathe solicitors, the outside elements, and the aggressive dogs, most people cannot understand why I would accept such a position. Truth was, I did not really know door-to-door -door was a thing. Growing up in rural Pennsylvania, the only people who ever came knocking were Jehovah's Witnesses. We used to make eye contact through the front windows of my parents' house. They would knock again, and I would go about my day. I thought they were annoying, but easy to ignore. I graduated college in winter of 2021, but finding a job proved to be a much more difficult feat than the people who push for degrees make it seem. Go to school, get an education, secure a career. Turns out, it is not so simple. To be fair, I love my job. I love my coworkers and the kind customers I meet who make it all worthwhile. I have been served dinner, given tours of in-home music studios, and received rides back to my car in the pouring rain on more than one occasion. Overall, going door to door has restored my faith in humanity. Despite having no sales experience, I soon became the top salesperson in my office. They say door to door is easier for women because people feel more comfortable opening the door for a female stranger than a male. That was, however, until Emiliana came along. She was the daughter of a poor immigrant family with no education past high school, and she was looking for the money to help support her parents and younger siblings. Her goals were honorable, but Emiliana was an exceptionally beautiful woman, and she knew it. Her awareness of her physical appearance manifested in a distasteful manner, and she had no problem using her looks to secure her sales. The problem with flirting her way into a paycheck was that we got paid to provide a service, not to sign people up for that service. So, all too often, her customers, aka a plethora of men, quickly canceled after wasting her time just to keep her attention and have a chat. Emiliana was becoming frustrated with her inability to create a sticky customer, a problem that I had previously battled and overcome. I was not full of myself, but I did receive my fair share of compliments, so I knew how she felt. Our boss was also growing impatient with her lack of true acquisition and was getting close to firing her if she could not fix the issue. That is what led to both of us sitting across from him that fateful Friday morning. Ladies, he greeted us, his face serious. As the only two women in my office, I expect you two to come together. I had tried to befriend Emiliana, but she was not interested in my guidance. She was more concerned with batting her eyes at our male co-workers and getting them to do things around the office for her. Mealy, you have run into quite the issue here. We have addressed it before, but nothing has changed. I have told you to consult with Skylar multiple times, and I've yet to see you put in the effort to do so. So, I am taking matters into my own hands. Emiliana crossed her arms and shot me a sour look, as if I were somehow responsible for this. Skylar's been here long enough that she knows the ins and outs of our industry, from a woman's perspective. Now, you do generate more sign-ups than she does. Thanks, boss. But... She gets paid out on significantly more. I need you to learn from her. So here is what we are going to do. We both waited patiently for him to continue his speech as he took a huge gulp from his coffee mug. He had a pension for theatrics. Building impulse, he called it. You are going to shadow Skylar for the day. There is a brand new territory that has never been touched that just opened for sale. These people have never been knocked before. 
I was going to send you on your own, but I do not want the leads to go to waste. Your objective for the day is to learn how to find a customer with a genuine want and need. He directed his next statement to me, and your main objective is to make sure she sees the right way of doing things. I was far from eager to spend an entire shift around Emelina, especially if I was meant to split sales with her. Friday was already a hard sales day, the typical prime times when people were usually home becoming the times when they were getting a jump start on their weekend. I decided not to complain. If Emelina got better, it would only benefit the office. The better the office did, the more we got paid on commission. Where's the territory? I asked. He shrugged. Some new build HOA. Because the residents are only just moving in, we were lucky enough to secure permits to solicit. This opportunity will not last forever, so I need you to have urgency and acquire as many new customers as possible. Got it. Got it, I nodded. Emiliana said nothing. She simply got up and walked out. I let out a huge sigh instead of verbally expressing my dismay at having to spend a day with her. Our boss shot me a smug grin at her childish exit. Have fun. The drive to the unfamiliar territory was an entire hour, and Emilina could not afford a car, so on top of having to tote her around with me all day, I had to endure a car ride with her, too. She did not speak the whole way there. She spent the trip making various faces at my music choices, picking at her nail polish, and periodically checking herself in the sun visor mirror. The HOA plan was the type I dreaded, all cookie-cutter homes that you could barely tell apart and cost way too much just to have your neighbor side by side with you. I knew the financial demographic of these areas well. Regardless of age, these were the people who thought because they could blow upwards of half a million dollars on a home that they were somehow better than everyone else, especially people who knocked on doors for a living. I found a parking spot that was inconspicuous enough Somewhere I would not be blocking the road or a driveway and began gathering my materials for a day of walking. Waters, notepaper, writing utensils, some protein bars. Emiliana simply smeared a sticky lip gloss over her lips and fixed her hair before stepping out of the car. This is so cute. She gushed as we started walking towards the first lead. It was the first time she had spoken since we left the office. The homes are nice. I stated simply, not wanting to bring more negativity into the situation. The first few hours of our shift went just as I'd expected. Housewives who didn't pay bills and could care less about the cost of them, elderly couples who hated change and could afford anything they wanted regardless of the quality, and a sprinkle of condescending decision-makers who made backhanded comments about our choice to be solicitors. A few even handed us business cards and promised we would make more slaving away for their personal companies. These people are mean. Emelina quite literally pouted as we stopped in the shade to drink some water. I offered her a protein bar and she took it from my hand without a thank you, checked the nutrition facts on the back, then handed it back to me with a look as if I had tried to poison her. For someone who grew up with extraordinarily little, she sure expected a lot. The sun was setting as we reached the end of our leads and, subsequently, our shift. We had managed to secure two sign-ups in the time we had been there. One of them a wealthy, single man who stared at Emiliana a little too long each time he looked at her and a kind middle-aged couple who offered us cold Gatorades. Just when I was about to stop for the day, my phone buzzed with a text from our boss. Only two sales in an unworked territory? You better put some overtime in. I read the text to Emiliana, who balked at the notion. We have practically talked to everyone here. There is no one left. As soon as the words left her mouth, we turned onto a sidewalk with a view of a large field, and, in the near distance, an entirely separate housing community with at least 100 homes in it. I checked the map that came with my leads and noticed that the community was not even marked on it. No street names, just a large, open field. Weird, I said. We do not have that on here. Satellite must not be updated yet. 
Maybe no one lives there, Emily and Auguste. From where we stood, though, we could see cars in the driveways and lights on in the homes. The signs of life were promising. Wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. I shrugged and started to make my way towards the community. We were not really supposed to work off our leads, but our boss said the whole place was brand new, and if he wanted us to work overtime, we were going to do it on our own terms. The entrance to the community was marked with tall, stone pillars and a sign that read, Less Observations. I took French in high school and college, and the back of my neck prickled upon mentally translating the words. I rationalized that the community did have an unobstructed view across the field next to it, and the stars were also clear all the way out here. We made our way to the first door on our right, and Emiliana went up and knocked before letting out a loud, high-pitched, Hey there! The door swung open near immediately, startling both of us, and a middle-aged woman stood there with a huge, toothy smile plastered on her face. Behind her was a young man. He was not smiling, just staring blankly at us. We both smiled and waved back, ready to start our pitch. Hello, miss. Emiliana began. I'm Mealy and this is Sky. We're here today on behalf of. Would you ladies like to come in? The woman cut her off cheerily, the smile never leaving her face. Now, both Emiliana and I had been invited inside plenty of times before in our career. Entering a prospect's premises was strictly against compliance, for both their safety and oars, but I could not deny I had ever personally broken that rule. If I knew for sure I was going to close a deal, and they wanted to make things official at their dining room table, I rarely denied the invitation. This, however, was extremely premature. Never had there been a time that someone invited me into their home immediately upon seeing me at their door. I could not say the same for Emiliana, but this show of hospitality did not usually occur until much later in the sales process. Plus, the motionless man behind her was giving me the creeps. Emiliana did have the same experience because the question tripped her up and she stumbled over the next few words of the pitch before coming to a halt. I'm sorry, miss. I spoke up. We aren't allowed to enter the customer's home. The woman's face darkened, and she promptly slammed the door shut in our faces. We were used to that type of rejection, but the sheer volume of the slam made us both jump. That was bizarre, I said as we made our way to the next house. We should have just gone inside, Emiliana replied in an accusatory tone. She was just being nice. Nice doesn't the pay the bills, I reminded her. The next several doors we knocked had the exact same interaction. Doors opened immediately, the people smiling so hard it looked like it hurt, cutting us off to invite us inside. Each time, I spoke over Emiliana to deny them, and each time Emiliana's irritation towards me grew as the doors were slammed in our faces. The weirdest part, though, was that at most of the houses, we could see another individual inside, whether at the door, or through a window, who never interacted with us. They just watched. We're never going to make a sale at this rate. She snapped at me on our walk between houses. These people are fucking strange. I finally let out some of my frustration. Different communities have diverse cultures. Everyone seems friendly here. We should be maximizing on that opportunity. People feel more comfortable inside. It is even easier to make the sale that way. She argued back. I could not deny that there was some logic to what she said, but I still was not convinced. As we approached the next door, my phone rang. I took a step back onto the sidewalk as Emily and I knocked and I checked to see our boss calling. I groaned before I accepted the call and pressed the phone to my ear. Where the hell are you? He hissed before I even had a chance to say hello. We're where you sent us, I replied. No. I am looking at your tablet's GPS, and it looks like you are wandering around some field. Be fair, Skylar. There is another community out here that was not on the map. It must be brand new. We are shooting our shot with the residents now. He was silent for a moment. All right, sounds good, but I expect to see some results. 
He hung up promptly, and I turned to see Emiliana already pitching a young couple. To my horror, I had missed the part where they had invited us in, and Emiliana happily accepted. She turned to me with a smirk before marching towards the entry where the couple stepped aside to make room for her. I could barely move from my spot, suddenly frozen. My body did not want to go forward, for something within me shouted that it was a horrible idea. Aren't you coming? Emiliana asked from the doorway. I could tell she was annoyed, but she was trying to cover it up with her customer service voice. I had half the mind to tell her I would wait for her there, but another part of me felt guilty for sending her to face her consequences alone. I should have just told her no, and that we were leaving, but instead I forced my feet to carry myself over to her. When the door shut behind us, my heart sank. As soon as I got a good look at the interior of the home, I knew I had made the wrong decision. Nothing about the layout made any sense. Where we had walked in looked like a bedroom. There was a bed, two wardrobes, and a floor-length mirror. Even weirder still, the carpeted area of the bedroom cut off in connection to a tile floor that supported an entirely open bathroom. There was a shower and a toilet, with a vanity and a sink. This is so cool, Emiliana said, no hint of suspicion in her tone. It's a work in progress, the man answered her, that creepy, toothy smile never dropping from his face. Do you guys have like, a dining room or something? I blurted out, not caring if it seemed rude. Yes, upstairs, the man answered. I immediately regretted asking as he motioned to the stairs. The woman started up them first, smile so wide I could see all her gums. In that moment, I realized she had not said a word, just stood by watching. Emiliana followed behind her and the man stood to my right, slightly behind me, and smiled at me expectantly. I did not want to ascend to the second level of these people's home. Even if I were in one of the normal situations where I entered a customer's home, I still would avoid their upper level like the plague. It is too far away from the exit if something were to go wrong. I instinctively reached for my phone in my pocket. A trick I used often when I wanted to get out of a conversation with someone wasting my time was to set an alarm, and when it went off, I would pretend to take a phone call. But from where the man stood watching me, he would be able to see what I was doing and thus call my bluff. Follow me. The man suggested. I briefly considered telling him no and going outside, running to my car, and driving back to force Emiliana into it. I just could not leave her. Something in me knew we would have a better chance as a unit. That if I did leave her alone, I would not see her again. So, I followed him. We went up the staircase, and I used the opportunity of being behind him to set my alarm. I gave us seven minutes. Seven minutes to close the sale or get out of there. Not to knock another door, not to speak to another person on the street, but to get to the car and get gone quickly. When we made it to the second level, I stopped dead in my tracks. Emily and I was seated at the dining room table, adjacent to a small kitchen, and the woman was pouring her a glass of what appeared to be some dark juice. What made up the rest of the level, though, was so outrageous, I nearly shouted at my co-worker for making herself at home like this place was normal. It was a garage. There is no other way to describe it. There was sporting equipment, a workbench, pool toys, and a car. On the second level, a car. No living room? I bit out, not even trying to hide my discomfort and judgment. This was asinine. I started to wonder if the Gatorades we accepted earlier were infused with magic mushrooms or LSD. Both. You ask a lot of questions. The wife spoke up for the first time. She sounded offended despite her unwavering smile. How do you get the car out? I challenged back. The man chuckled and took a seat at the table. Come join us, Skylar. Both the avoidance of answering my question and addressing me by name made my skin crawl. I ignored his instruction and remained where I stood. You're being rude. Emiliana suddenly spoke up. Not everyone loves the same way you do. 
I wanted to ask her if she was stupid or just desperate or both. I could see now her issue was that she would accept any behavior from a customer if she could sign them up. No preservation skills whatsoever. The man never stopped staring at me. He never stopped smiling. I never stopped standing. The wife took the seat beside him and smile stared at me too. I would not budge. Emiliana began giving them a rundown of our product. They pretended to listen, nodding along, but they never took their eyes off me. Whatever their intentions were, they saw me as a threat to them. When Emiliana finished her story, the woman finally looked at her, titled her head like a confused animal, and asked, What's Wi-Fi? Currently, a woman who looked to be in her early 30s would have no reason to ask such a thing. I suddenly realized I had seen no electronics in their home. No TVs, no computers, not even a cell phone. Something about this realization is what did it for me. Of all the abnormalities surrounding this couple, the lack of modern technology was the most concerning. They could arrange their home however inconveniently or nonsensically they wanted to, fine, but why no connection to the outside world? Not only could they not reach out, but others could not check in. Emiliana seemed taken aback by the question. I did not give her a chance to answer or realize there was no sale to be made here. I was done playing along. All right, let us go, Emiliana. They have no use for what we are offering. Emiliana did not reply. She did not even look at me. It was like she was frozen at the table. The wife continued to stare at her, head tilted, smiling into oblivion. The man, however, stayed fixated on me. I did not want to take my eyes off him for even a second, but eventually my gaze wandered to Emiliana's hand clutching her glass of juice, which was now empty. My heart rate sped up and a sweat broke out across my skin. What did they give her? Do you ever stop smiling? I snapped at him. Smiling is nice, isn't it? He spoke slowly, strategically. It's inviting. Inviting. The word racket inside my brain. All the smiling weirdos who answered the doors before them popped into my mind. Their eager offers to have us step inside. I knew now they did not slam the doors to reject us. They slammed them because we rejected what they really wanted. Then, my phone alarm sounded. I took it from my pocket with shaking hands. I pretended to answer a phone call as the man watched on. Yeah, sorry, it is late. We will wrap it up. I spoke to no one. I put the phone back in my pocket and cleared my throat. Emiliana, I tried again. We have to go. She still sat in place. I crossed the room and shook her shoulder. Let's go. I demanded. No. The woman outburst, slamming her hands on the table. Her smile dropped completely, a quick glance to the man and I saw his was gone too. We never get anyone to come in. The wife continued her tirade. Everyone else makes it look so easy. We just want to learn. Let us watch her. I stood with my shaking hand on Emiliana's shoulder. I would not let her go. The wife looked near to tears. The husband stood from the table. I almost wished he would smile at me again, his scowl now so deep his whole face wrinkled. You're being incredibly rude, he scolded me. Bad things happen to poorhouse guests in this neighborhood. We're not your guests. I shouted at him. I went back to shaking Emiliana but she would not budge. I moved around her to check her vitals, and her eyes were wide open, her face blank. She was awake, but not aware, just like the people we saw inside the homes. What the fuck did you give her? I snapped. Would you like some? The man asked. It'll make everything easier. I did not answer. I needed to leave in that very moment. With a final effort, I hoisted Emiliana by her armpits and made her stand from the table. She was stable on her feet, but still had no reaction. I pulled on her hand, and she started to follow me, but stumbled over her steps. I started to pull harder, but the woman rushed from the table and wrapped her arms around Emiliana's shoulders. She was sobbing and stroking her hair. Please don't take her. 
She begged me. Please, we've waited so long. It's our turn. The man stood away from the scene and watched me, his expression daring me to deny the woman what she wanted. Get the solution. He directed his words at the woman. She's not going to come willingly. The woman whimpered and looked back at the man. I could tell she did not want to let go of Emiliana. He nodded his head in the direction of the fridge, and she reluctantly complied. As soon as her arms were gone, I tugged on Emiliana once more, and she followed. She was slow, but the more she walked, the quicker our pace became. We were at the top of the stairs when a hand grabbed my shirt and pulled me backwards. The wind was knocked out of me as the man slammed me to the floor. The woman stood over me holding a transparent plastic jug filled with the dark liquid. He held my shoulders and I kicked at the woman, but she quickly moved to my side and appended the jug. The dark liquid began spilling out all over my face, the floor, my hair, and shirt. Get it in her mouth, the man shouted. My fight or flight officially kicked in, and I rolled my knees into my chest before I kicked upwards with all my might and successfully knocked the jug from her hands. She gasped and the man let go of me to grab what was left in the bottle. I rushed to my feet and spit and blew the contents from my nose and mouth. I wiped my eyes and searched for Emiliana. She was where I left her, dazed and unmoving. I took my chances, grabbed her upper arm, and dragged her down the stairs behind me. The man and the woman were on our tail, but I made it to the door before they could stop us. I threw it open and pulled Emiliana with me into the night. I looked back as I booked it down the sidewalk, and I saw the people never cross the threshold of their front door. They were not chasing us, or rather, they could not. As we made our way back to the entrance, doors flew open to watch us. None of the residents left their spot, but they glared at us in the night. They no longer smiled. I do not remember making it back to the car or how I got Emiliana into it. I barely remember how sick she was as I drove us to the nearest hospital, vomiting all down herself. I know that I ran in and screamed for help and answered a million questions as they loaded her onto a stretcher. I babbled off the tale of our night and they asked me how much of the solution I had ingested. I said I did not know, and soon I was admitted too. I awoke the next morning in a hospital bed and gown, and a nurse told me I had a few moments to myself before I had to speak with a couple police officers. She told me our boss was there, too, demanding to know if we were safe. I asked about Emiliana, but she would not answer me. When the police officers came in, they asked me to reiterate the events from the night before. I told them everything. Both listened intently, but only one of them asked questions while the other wrote everything down. When I finished, the writer put down his notebook and looked to the questioner. The questioner sighed and leaned forward. Here's the thing, Skylar, he said. We went and checked out the place where you said these events occurred, and long story short, there is no less observators community there. It is just a big empty field waiting to be developed. My mouth went dry as I tried to process what he was saying. That was impossible. I was there. I saw it. Emiliana saw it too. Ask Emiliana. I sputtered. She was there. The officer made a grim expression and glanced over at his partner. The partner slightly shook his head, but I still noticed it. Emiliana isn't stable enough for questioning, yet, he said gently. But we'll talk to her as soon as we can. The officers wished me a speedy recovery and left the room. There was a knock at the door, and I expected to see my boss, but it was the nurse again. I once more tried to get information about Emiliana, but she simply shook her head. I cannot reveal another patient's information to someone who is not next of kin, but I can tell you what we know about what happened to you. We evaluated your blood and urine to see exactly what it was you were forced to drink, and, well, we have never seen anything like it. What do you mean? The results were inconclusive. There was only one element that our systems could identify. She trailed off. Well, what was it? 
Formaldehyde. My stomach went sick. The stuff they put in dead people. It is a preservative that is used by morticians, yes, but it is mostly found in hardware appliances or household products, even in some foods. I could tell she was trying to placate me, but I knew the latter examples had nothing to do with why it was in that drink. Okay, but it's used in funeral homes to keep bodies from decaying so they can be viewed, right? I continued. She nodded her head solemnly, and I knew she knew I as well did that that was the intention of our attackers. To preserve us. I thought back to the blank faces of the others in the homes at Les Observators. The lack of emotion and awareness. And then I remembered the hysterics of the woman. The way she demanded to keep Emiliana. To watch her. To view her. My boss came barreling into the room, then ignoring the protests of my nurse. Thank God you're alive, he breathed out. And in that moment, I said something I never thought I would. I quit. Emiliana never fully recovered. She was able to use her motor skills as she pleased, but she never spoke unless spoken to. She never got in anyone's way or performed a task without being directed to do so. She never showed any emotion on her face. Her family told me the hospital did expansive research on her condition, but the test results never showed any known substance besides the same as mine, formaldehyde. Despite not having a good relationship with her previously to our horrid, shared experience, I felt an unbreakable bond with her after that night. She was no longer able to work in the door-to-door -door sales, but... She was brought on as part of an inclusivity program at a local grocery and retail store, and from what I heard, she was great at her job because she always followed instructions. I spent a lot of time visiting her and her family after she was discharged, and with the stable income from my new position, I helped them out financially wherever I could. Looking back on that night, one thing that always stumped me was why Emiliana was so susceptible to the couple's urgings. Sure. She had chosen to drink a full glass of their so-called solution, but she never questioned anything before that. She made herself right at home from the jump, even complimented the confused setup of the house, as if it were normal. Where I was able to keep my wits about me the whole evening, hers seemed to leave as soon as we stepped across the threshold of the doorway. The only conclusion I can make is this. I never wanted to enter the home. I only went inside after Emiliana asked me to. But Emiliana? She accepted the invitation. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.